Hello, I'm Roy Richardson, and this is the Dynamic Business Leaders Podcast. Good day, everyone. It's Roy Richardson here of Aurora Infotech, and I want to welcome you to another edition of the Business Leaders Podcast. Um, you know, this podcast is really about you and bringing, you know, business leaders of Central Florida and other areas together uh, to tell their story. We want to hear about your journey. We want to hear about the struggles you went through. We want to hear about the, you know, the things that work well for you. And it's really about sharing knowledge with, with other business uh, leaders and, and business owners that are out there. And today I'm extremely excited because I have someone here who I've, have, I've met over the last year or so and have come to admire. And, 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 you know, he is a keynote speaker, a sales trainer, a business coach, an author. He happens to be this year's recipient of the coveted number one sales trainer ranking by Global Gurus internationally. And his sales development program is voted the best in the world. Uh, he's host of the popular Sales Edge podcast. He's also a co-author and intellectual resource behind the book, Sell Naked on the Phone. And he happens to be the CEO and co-founder of Peachy and Peachy, together with his wife, Dawn. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, Joe Peachy. Joe, hey, welcome. Right, it's so good to see you, man. It's been too long. It's been too long. It's been too long. And you know, the problem is with, with, with everything that we got going on now, it's, it's hard to get out there and see people, right? And, and so in your line of work, where you're actually, you know, bringing people together and, 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 and teaching them how to not, you know, how, it, how to interact without being face to face. I mean, you know, this, I think a lot of people are going to take away a lot of value from today's uh, session uh, based on, on, on some of the things that you're going to, you're going to share with us. Yeah. You know, it, it, we have been doing business for 30 years and I've been selling virtually for 30 years probably 80% of my client base don't live here in Central Florida. So from a selling standpoint, from a business acquisition standpoint, uh, our business was built for this. Not that we like it, yeah. but we've been able to continue to grow during this time. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's amazing. And so let me ask you, you know, what, 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 tell us a little more about your business. What does Peachy Peachy do, uh, you know, and, 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 and who's your target market? Get, share with us. All right. Well, number, number one, uh, our, our real focus, uh, because just like any business, over the course of time, you develop other silos in other areas. But, but what we're known for globally is we do consultative tactical sales coaching and training. And what okay. I mean by that is we're not transactional. We're very, because, you know, most sales happens between the sixth and the 13th contact. Yeah. And so we, we're more consultative in our approach. However, 80% of our training is skills. One of the uniquenesses that we do is in our training, we do live outbound telephone call training, booking oh, wow. appointments. And so we don't believe in role play because I, I think that's the hardest part of business is being able to get face to face with your target market. And so we've built the whole business around that. So when you say target market, because our niche is application-based training, then we work in various uh, arenas. For example, insurance, cybersecurity, real estate, um, franchising. Any business that wants to increase their client base, we work with because our approach is mastering processes and skills. Gotcha. We even have another vertical where we work with speakers, coaches, trainers, and consultants, not on how to speak, but how to build a profitable business, how to generate a six figure income because most speakers are great on stage. They may not be great on the business acumen. So in our verticals, our whole approach is how can right now what we're doing with our clients and future clients, we're helping them recapture lost revenue. How do you go back out wow. and make your money back? So did I, did I answer that for you? Oh yeah, 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 definitely. Definitely. And, and so, and, and that's, that's, that's amazing. So, 
you know, just from the standpoint of teaching people how to do cold calls and how to make, you know, those, those sales calls over the phone, <clears throat> I, I can tell you from, you know, from, from back in my early days in training, I mean, that's the, that's the barrier, that wall that we, we automatically put up, right? It's, it's almost like it's on a, on a switch. And the minute we need to go to do that, that wall comes up and we kind of forget everything that we've, we've been taught. So how, we, how are you getting past and, 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 you know, getting people past that, that wall that they sort of put there. And, and the that's a great question because they do put walls up, but they put walls up because their whole life in sales, they were taught what and why. Oh. Motivation, all, goal setting, but very few sales trainers sell themselves. Not that they're not good people. They're great people and they're great at what they do but they may not be the ones that are out there getting their own, their own clients. I don't believe you can teach what you don't do. Okay. That's true. And so I make 150 outbound calls every week. Now that doesn't count follow-up calls. That doesn't, that's to new clients. Well, because I do that, I can train it. So we have a process that we take people through. I don't sell scripts. I train and help people develop them. And so one of the ways that fear dissipates is understanding what am I saying, who am I saying it to, and why am I saying it? Hmm. Okay. And so I think companies tend not to equip their people with the real skills. I mean, a week from today, and this will air later so we will have already been there i got a three-day sales boot camp i only allow 20 people there'll be 18 different industries on day three they're all going to make outbound calls we usually do 70 to 75 percent conversion to appointment we usually nice. get through 92 percent of the gatekeepers and in the afternoon of that call session we'll get 60 or 70 return phone calls now people say how can you do that well, it's one of our focus areas. I know, for example, you are an expert in the security world, in cybersecurity. I mean, that's what you do. Right, and right. because you do it and do it and do it, you've become an expert. So one of our expertise areas is we know how to get people to their target market for the right reason at the right time. That's great. That's, a, that's, that's I, I mean, that is that that is like I said before the, that that wall that comes up is is really what stops and blocks a lot of people and and catches them up and then you mentioned the other thing where a lot of people follow a lot of scripts um, and sometimes even you know and I, I get a lot of calls here and and to be honest with you when I'm when I'm calling I I you know try to to be as natural as possible but you do you can tell when people call you and, and you're you're you know they're following along a, a script and all of a sudden you ask a question that's not in the script and and you sort of derail their whole process <laughs> well let me let me say this about script there's good scripts and there's bad scripts and i was sitting with a ceo two weeks ago and this we said said joe my salespeople hate scripts and i went hey the best actors in the world are italian you got Brando, you got Pacino. And I, I went down a list. I said, they all read the script, but they know it so well. And they know how to make adjustments to ad lib because they know it so well. That's when the script becomes powerful. Yeah, that's true. If you have to make it up a new thing, every time you talk to somebody, good luck with that. Yeah. There's no process there, right? There's no. And, and I don't believe in selling from charisma or talent because these are two things were not given to me. So I had to build out processes. We, we rely on three things, processes, communications, and skills. And so once you have that in your toolbox, then it's just a matter of how hard do I want to work? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So Joe, Tell me a little bit. Let's let's go back a little bit in time here. How how did you how did Peachy and Peachy come about? And and, and, and <laughs> we, we were an accident. I mean, <laughs> I was a football coach. My wife was a voice teacher. Uh -huh. I got fired at a college job. During that time, Dawn was ill. We showed up in Florida, you know, three hundred fifty, three hundred eighty thousand dollars in medical debt. I was raised by an old Italian guy that said, "You pay your debts." 
yeah, yeah. Didn't know anything about business. In 1992, not knowing anything about anything, I signed up in the direct sales business. They didn't teach us to sell. They didn't teach, all they taught us to do was sneak up on people, which was not my behavior style. <laughs> but, but I knew I needed to learn some skills. Uh-huh. I knew I knew had I had to learn how to generate quality leads. I had to master the skill of booking appointments, and I had to have a good sales consultative meeting. That's what I focused on. And in five years, we paid everything off. Wow! Because of that, they were throwing us on stages all around the world, and we were doing these big keynotes, you know, and and then we'd be training and. About 2004, we're in, we're, in Cal, uh, no, so we're in Canada, we're speaking at a convention. We go up to our room and I said, we're done with this. I don't wanna do direct sales anymore. We have built skills that not only can we speak from the big stage, but we've become elite trainers and coaches. Right. So tomorrow we're gonna go full-time in peachy and peachy and make it a speaking, coaching, training, consulting firm, okay? And we knew the people who were in direct marketing were not going to come with us as clients because the fees were going to change. Right, right. (laughs) And so in 2004, we kicked off Peachy and Peachy as a training, speaking, coaching business. But we don't speak on all things, Roy. I mean, I don't do leadership training. I don't do motivational things. I... I'm not a life, I am not a life coach, okay? You wouldn't come to me for life coaching. I don't have that gene. So we got very vertical. Dawn is ranked in the top 10 women on LinkedIn to follow. She's not a social media expert. She is an expert on how to mine leads in your target market on LinkedIn. 35% of our business is coming from that. So now we have 22 ways of generating leads. So, So how this whole thing has happened is the only thing we will train and speak and coach on is what we do to grow our own business. Now we've backed it up with content, materials, PowerPoints, the whole nine yards, but we're teaching from what we do. So now we've been doing this since 2004, full time, and and we stay vertical. So so and, and that, that's an that's a that's a, an impressive story, and thanks for sharing it. So, in other words, what I gather is, is someone coming to you are going to learn the processes, the skill sets. Etc. to be able to make the cold calls and, and to be able to improve their skill, their sales skills. But on top of that, I, I, I gather that there is a part of that that's also maybe some training and lead generation and, 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 and generating leads via LinkedIn, et cetera. Is that what I was? Well, well, here's the thing. Number one, I want you to, without correcting you, I want us to get out of the mindset of warm, cold, and hot calls. They're all the same. The only difference is you might have an introduction, but at the end of the day, even a warm call has, is not any better closing ratio than a cold call, believe it or not. In fact, my lowest closing ratio is when somebody calls me because they're usually wanting to pick my brain. Okay. So (laughs) our sales process covers everything from communication skills, which involve a lot of listening to how do you sell each behavior style, to 20 ways of generating leads, LinkedIn being one of them, to how you build out your entire messaging, whether you're using it on your website, your LinkedIn, whether you're using it verbally, over the phone, what comes out of your mouth, okay, to making the calls, to doing presentations, one-on-one, group, or now we're into this virtual selling thing. So we have a whole training on how do you sell virtually and not let your closing ratios go down. And then we wrap the whole thing up with priority and time management. So so, uh, the biggest thing about our world is when somebody wants me to work with them, they want X results, but they want to tell me how long it's going to take. I won't take that contract. Yeah. Because... I don't tell a doctor how to fix my leg. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so it's, it, it's amazing because most companies, they spend so much money on marketing and on websites and on this, and they leave very little for sales. And yet it's the only thing in business that makes you any money at all. 
That's true. I mean, the, the, the rest of it is the, the fluff and, and, and puff that builds the, a bit of, of brand awareness, et cetera. But it's, the, it's that personal interaction that's really that, that rapport and, and, and relationship building that's, is, what, is what guarantees that, that, that opportunity. Sure. Yeah. yeah. People buy from people they trust. That's the bottom yeah. line. Yeah. So, so you, you, l- let me ask you, because I do want to, I do want to uh, ask you on, on the, on the virtual, uh, you know, the, the transition here, but before we get to that, you mentioned before something interesting. So next week, and, and like you said, this will probably air, air later, you're hosting a, a boot camp. Tell us a little bit about that. And, and, and is this something you do once a year or? or no, or, we actually do it twice a year. We actually, you know, it's funny because we actually did it in June. We were the first live event in Florida. Now oh. we got 2000 square feet. We only allow 20 people. So everybody had 100 square feet to themselves. We were safer than Publix, okay? And they all had their own table. But twice a year, we have these boot camps. Now, we do corporate training all year round and coaching. But twice a year, we have three trainings in one week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is this intense sales training from 8.30 to 5. And people come from, a. I mean, this next one October, I have people coming from eight states, all right? Wow. Then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we have the business of speaking, training, and coaching. And then in the evenings on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we do DISC certification training, the human behavior model. So we run three separate trainings in one week live. uh, And some people go to one, some people go to two, some people go to three. It just depends what they want. So have you, have you seen, and, and, and that's pretty impressive. Have you, have you seen um, where, and, and you know, I, I, I told you I wanted to, to transition a little bit into the virtual aspect and how this whole, you know, this new setting that we're in. When, when we look at, at that boot camp that, that you're running there, where you're running three different trainings in, in one week, um, you know, is, is there any thought maybe, I'm assuming that the, the importance of that is being in person, right? You, you, you don't envision right. taking that online. Understand that there are certain things, and we do a lot of virtual training, right? A lot. I, my whole, most of my coaching clients are done virtually, and I have a big coaching business. But there are certain things that are not going to translate. Yeah. You're not going to duplicate that live outbound telephone call through Zoom. Yeah. And so we want to hold the integrity of that training. I had a guy that con- uh, called me late last night. I reached out to him first thing this morning. Uh, I went through my process. We went to proposal. I'm giving him an opportunity because he wants to live calls. He can either come to the boot camp or he can fly in and work with me one-on-one. Actually, it'd be two of them. And so I give people options. We have multiple ways we can work with people. You know, another thing we do is, thanks to my wife, she launched SMV, which is our Sell More Virtually membership program. So on Thursday night, I do a live training or a live coaching virtually. There's a lot of downloads. It's a membership platform. And so that's another way we can serve our clients or future clients. So we what we do is very niche. Who we do it for and how we deliver is vast. Did I answer your question? Yeah, no, yeah, you certainly did. You certainly did. So, so in this realm now of, and, and certainly understand that you do uh, the vast majority of, of, of your coaching and stuff like that is, is online. So I would say that, you know, and, and, and that's, we do a lot, a lot of remote work as well, right? And, and, uh, and, and, and have been for many, many moons and, and with customers, you know, the world over. How has this, you know, th- this new era that we're in, the, the pandemic scenario with, you know, businesses closing down and people working from their homes and different things like that, how has it affected your business? Well, it's February 21st. <laughs> in 30 minutes, I had two contracts canceled to the tune of $85,000. Wow. But you, know, you remember the old submarine movies when the destroyer yeah. was coming? Dive, dive, dive. Yeah, yeah. Joe and Don Peachy have been doing what we've been doing a long time. As we say here at Peachy and Peachy, we got a lot of water under the bridge. We have a whole process for crisis times. We didn't panic. 
We, and we don't have a board to report to. So we just say, okay, what do we do virtually that we can make money with? We made all our money back in three weeks. Now, we took the content that we knew would deliver results virtually, and then I have a complete virtual selling process. Okay. Just put that into gear. Kept selling, kept delivering virtually. So that was in... February, we're, we're still growing. I mean, it, we took a shot, but we're still growing and we're realigning our business in a way that what we do, certain things are going to translate better virtually. And we knew most of what we were going to do was virtually. But then I looked out and I said, we were having our boot camps in May. I said, you know why? By June, we'll probably be at level two. That's 50 or more people. Let's move our boot camp to there because we only have 20. Mm -hmm. And and we were able to have, and the people were ecstatic. They called it the Peachy Island. Wow. Nobody has gotten sick from it. They were, they, and here's the thing. We booked a couple hundred appointments on Wednesday. When people said nobody's answering the phone, they were answering the phone. There were people that wanted to do business with those people. So I think. One of the things is pe when all is said and done, more is said than done, people are trying to figure this thing out instead of saying, what do we do that will translate virtually? Let's sell that. And, and, and you're absolutely right on that, on, on all aspects, and not only in sales, but I, you know, we see it in, in, in other realms as well. I think people are not very good at adopting or adapting, I should say, um, you know, and as you said, you know, realigning themselves to current situations, right? Um, you took a, a step back and you said, okay, let, let's take a look at what's going to work, what's not going to work, and, and what do we need to tweak to make sure that we can survive and move forward. But yet, you speak to a lot of people out there and everybody's talking about, for the most part, you know, getting things back to the way it was. Um, and, and, and I don't, I don't think that's ever going to happen. And the longer that people stay within that little bubble, um, the, the, the quicker that bubble sorts of, you know, fizzes, fizzes down. What, what's your, what's your thoughts on that? Well, I, I think one thing is part of the reason why people froze up, you know, they were spending so much time in front of the television. They had time on their hands. They were spending so much time listening to the news and I'm not, I'm not monitoring. No, yeah. I'm just saying yeah. that they were listening to this. They were in abject fear instead of saying, they're shutting me down. We're getting ready to do shutdown. Is there anything we can do? See, out of, out of crisis comes new ideas. An opportunity. We, were not, we didn't have a virtual site up. I mean, Peachy and Peachy, we, were, we did a lot of virtual training, but we didn't have a virtual platform for membership. Oh. And so, you know, on March, we made a decision. And I said, Dawn, I'm not taking my foot off the gas. I'm going to continue to grow our business. We're going to get it all back and we're going to grow. So she took it on. We worked with a platform out of Australia. And I, I know a lot of speakers and trainers. It takes them two years to go to market. I mean, we were up and running August 1st. Nice. Okay. But again, we were being very proactive. We weren't waiting to see if the media says, okay, everything's okay. Yeah. You can yep. take off your mask. This was all a hoax. <laughs> you know, in 2008, when economically the bottom dropped out. Yeah. My industry, 90% of the people who were speakers, trainers, or coaches either went part-time, got out, or partnered up with other people. We tripled our business that year. Not because we weren't famous. We, we weren't international brands. I have eight non-negotiables for business growth. We execute our eight non-negotiables. Good economy, bad economy, we're going to grow. Now, are we growing this year at the rate I wanted to? No. But you know what? We have a healthy business because we're proactive. 
on solutions. Now, I'm not being insensitive. There are some businesses out there who are not allowed to do business. Yeah. yeah. I'm not speaking to those people. I'm not speaking to the people, the hotel industry. Yeah. I'm not speaking to the people in the convention business. I'm not speaking to those bars and restaurants that were closed. I feel bad for those people. But there are a lot of businesses out there that if people would have focused on focus instead of fear, action instead of anxiety, they would have at least moved the needle, okay, and began to recapture some momentum. I, I think just as a, as a you know, in, in my line of work, we, we often talk about business continuity and disaster planning, right? And, and a lot of people equate that to, oh, well, you know, backup and, and, uh, and et cetera. But it's really about looking at holistically at, at your company and saying, okay, you know, it, it's, it, I, I equate it to, t to being a tabletop exercise, right? And it's a what if scenario. What if this happens? Okay, if this happens, we're going to have a plan for that. And that's what, I, that's what I, I just heard from you in terms of what you and Don had in place, right? What if that happens? Well, we have a plan for that. And so we're not waiting until an emergency actually takes place to then start coming up with a plan. Um, I often share with, with people, you know, I'm a, I'm a licensed pilot. Um, when I was doing my, my flight training, uh, the instructors would take us out, uh, put a, 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 a covering over our, our, our faces so that we could not see the, the horizon because wow, we tend to use, yeah, we, we <laughs> yeah. use peripheral vision, right? And, and then of course, take us through all these loops and turns. Yeah forcing you to rely on the instrument panel that's in front of you. And the yeah. whole reason is, is that it's not a matter of if you will ever experience a scenario it's where weird. your engine cuts out, but if you do, or if you get in something called spatial disorientation where you have no vision, you know, you need to know how to, how to, you know, that, 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 that memory muscle needs to kick in. Right. Um, so yeah, I hear you. And, 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 and uh, I think what is coming out of this, I hope is that a lot of businesses now hopefully will start realizing you know what, we need to have that business continuity plan. We need to have that plan B, not only from our technology perspective, but from sales perspective, from, you know, marketing, from our, our, our uh, communications in terms of the messaging we want out there, the whole nine yards, and put that together so that they can execute it uh, in difficult times. Sure. You know, and then, you know, what, what let me ask you here, uh, um, you know, what would you recommend to our listeners and viewers in terms of, you mentioned several times, you know, and, and I know this is one of the themes of, of, uh, of, of, uh, of, of, your, of your training and stuff like that, but explain recapturing lost revenue and, and what would you recommend to our listeners on how they can go in these, these difficult times to recapture lost revenue? I, I think the first thing they have to do is they got to look at their business now, we're talking about recapturing lost revenue. The only way you can recapture lost revenue is get clients. That's the bottom line. So let's talk about that aspect. Underneath that heading, there are certain things that you have to do. I mean, and so if you're out there and you're listening, you're saying, I, I want to recapture lost revenue. First thing you want to revisit is, where are my leads coming from? Mm -hmm. Are these good leads? Am I, am I spending a lot of time fishing in the wrong hole? Yep. Okay. Most people do. I mean, I think networking is good. However, you spend a lot of time. And if you're in the wrong networking group, you spend a lot of time. So yeah. you want to really look at your lead generation. Then you want to say, what is our strategy and our skill and our ability to get an appointment with that one? I mean, once you can book appointments, the game is over. All this all this, I need to change my brand. I need to change my marketing. No, you need to make money. Do you know that the first three years, Dawn and I, our first year without a brand, without anything, without PowerPoint, without all the fancy things we have now, we made a solid six-figure income because we knew this, leads, appointments, sales meetings. Yeah. So if you want to recapture revenue, you want to assess what's my lead generation how good am I at getting appointments? And what does my sales presentation look like? Because if the client is not doing 80% of the talking, you're not selling. And so if I'm coaching one of you people out there that are listening to this thinking, this guy is crazy. <laughs> if you can tell me three more important things on recapturing lost revenue, please let me know. 
because that's what we did. We literally said, okay, we're in a climate of, I said, Dawn, our top three lead generation, the, the top three ways we generate leads, I'm going to give them to you right now. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to hide them. LinkedIn, being on somebody else's podcast <laughs> and outbound cold calls. Those are the top three ways I generate leads, believe it or not. So I said, don't forget all these other ways we're generating leads right now. You know, when I was a football coach, it was always amazing. You get your butt whipped on Saturday and your Sunday meeting, you'd stand up there and go, men, we're going back to the basics. Well, if the basics work, why did we leave them? Yeah. All right. So, so it's interesting there because you, you, you brought in football, you brought in your, 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 your top lead, you know, generating uh, um, um, areas, which brings me to an important point here is that you're constantly measuring everything and, and you're measuring and making adjustments, which, which is the football coach of you inside of you as well, because, you know, I mean, at the end of the day on Sunday after the game, what are you looking? You're looking at the stats, right? And you're looking at film and stats. Well, here's what I know about you. <laughs> Your business is data driven. Your whole world is data. When I learned that everything we did had to be measured, the game was over. We measure everything. We measure cost of acquiring a client. I watch people spend so much money to get a client but they go, well, the product was this much. They paid this much. That was our margin. No, your margin was no. everything. Yeah. And so that, that's why we do have a B2B business and a B2C business. Okay. And so our B2C are small business owners, you know, that type of thing. Our B2B is the Fortune 100. And so, but again, I don't care what the situation is. We measure the cost of doing business. We measure everything. I have a whole chart. I'm a metric guy. I'm a chart guy. I love charts. <laughs> In fact, last night on our SMV Pro, I rolled out our focus board to them. And, and it's like they're going, and, and you got the certain behavior styles, the people oriented, they're all over the, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, we have a focus board. Oh, this is gonna drive me crazy. Listen, the single number one thing that gets you through a crisis is focus. Mm -hmm. And I don't have time to listen. I mean, people call me up and they go, have you heard this? No, and I don't want to. <laughs> I've got to generate X amount of, I got a family to take care of, you know? And <laughs> yeah. with my clients, my role in my client's life is to equip them and help them get in front of their target market. End of story. And so all of our energies go to that. Interesting. Interesting. That that's, that's pretty interesting. You know, I, I, I it, it takes me back to, to a discussion I had recently with someone. And while you were talking there, you, 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 uh, you jog my memory. A lot of times I've seen business owners, when, particularly when they're looking for salespeople, they hire in people and then they put them right on the phone and they're expecting this super miracle to take place. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 <it's laughs> you know, if they were that good, they don't accompany. Look, here's, here's what I want you to understand when you're thinking about hiring a salesperson. Number one, most people make mistakes hiring the wrong salesperson because they don't ask them the right questions during the interview. And they don't tell the person they're interviewing, this is what you're going to be doing every day. This is what you're going to be held accountable for. They actually talk people into taking the job because they won't ask for much money. <laughs> okay. Wow. Now, if I owned a traditional company where I was hiring a salesperson, the single, and I'm not saying this to sell you sales training, but I want, I want you to stay with me here. The single number one point of contact with your potential client and with the world 
is your sales team and they get the least amount of restrictive training. They're allowed to say whatever they want. They're allowed to make it up. You spend thousands of dollars with some branding expert. You spend thousands of dollars with some marketing expert. You build this gorgeous logo, this beautiful brand. You get in the building you can't afford, and then you let salespeople say whatever they want, and they will destroy your brand in one sentence. When I go into a company and I ask the salespeople, tell me what you say, I cannot believe that none of them say the same thing. None of them have any type of understanding on, on what it takes because I say, look, you are the first point of contact. You are building or destroying this company's brand. Yeah, that's true. It's scary. Yeah. It, 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 it almost takes you back to, you know, my mom worked for the, for the airline industry for many, many years. And, and, you know, one thing with the airline industry, at least in the past, is, is they were very, you know, up on their training and the messaging oh, yeah. and the, the way they approach things and everything was, as you mentioned before, everything was process oriented, you know. Um, and and it's, it's, it's funny because sometimes I, I have discussions with her and she relates to me, for example, experiences that she's going through um, in today's day and age. And she's like, my God, I, I can't believe that this is what they call customer service today. This would <laughs> never have flown back in my day, you know, exactly. <laughs> but, but, and, and that's, you know, that, that I, I digress a little bit with the customer service, but it's the same thing with sales. It's the you same know, thing. People, people just say whatever they feel like. And you're right. You speak to three different people in a company and, and you get four different, you know, customer service. Customer service has a lot to do with future sales. In fact, in the top 10 reasons why people buy from you, price is number nine. Customer service is number four. Okay. The way you treat people, the way you talk, the way you look. Um, I have a policy whether I'm sitting with you one-on-one, -on -one, whether I'm walking into your corporation, whether I'm on a keynote stage, people always want to know where I stand on social issues and politics. And I say, hey, I have, I have a, a, a policy that I don't talk about sexual persuasion. I don't talk about politics. I don't talk about religion because I got a 50-50 chance of losing you as a client. And I yep. smile and they smile. I cannot believe how many things people bring to the table when they're supposed to be getting a building a business and growing clients. Look, I'm an offensive guy just by the way I look. The <laughs> last thing I need to do is throw something else on the table. <laughs> no, but I, I hear you. I hear you. And I, 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 I yeah, I, I know. I, I, some discussions, sometimes uh, business discussions go uh, to the side where you really scratch your head. But I, listen, I, I subscribe to the same principles, you know, no religion, no sexual talk, no politics, you know, um, your beliefs is your beliefs and mine is mine. And, and you know, let, let, let's, let's just keep them under the hood, right? People pay me for one thing, results. Yeah. And somebody said to me, Joe, Number two through 30 on Global Guru spends millions of dollars in advertising. You spend nothing. How did you get to number one? I don't know other than every result we deliver, we post it and anybody can call any of our clients. And if we don't deliver what we promise and more, I tell them not to hire us because we'll stand on our results because really in business, that's the only thing you get paid for. Yeah. 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 So, so, so I got two, two, we're, we're, we're rounding up here on, on, on the top, but uh, I got two questions for you. And, and the first question is, you know, 
your entire journey, you, you've, you've had a, a, a very successful journey. You've, you've hit your head a couple times. You got up. You, you never let it bring you down. You, you learn from it. You dusted yourself off. You move on. The, people are going through some very, very difficult times right now. With, you know, and, and as you rightfully pulled, uh, put uh, earlier, I said earlier, sorry, um, you know, there, there are some businesses out there that just, you know, can't help it, but, but there are others who, who could, right? Uh, or, or, or who may have been different in a different position had they, had they taken a, a little bit of a different approach. What would be two nuggets that you could leave with, with business people today in terms of, you know, in these difficult times, um, in terms of turning their business around or maybe even growing and, 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 All right. and now, you before know. I give you the nuggets, I'm going to tell them where they can listen to a podcast yeah, that ahead. handles that topic in entirety. My, the okay. podcast I recorded at O oh Dark 30 this morning was an assessment on the last eight months. Did we do these things? And here's some things we can do. My podcast is called Sales Edge. It's on all the podcast hosts. I also have a gift for you that's going to answer some of those questions. Awesome. If you take out your cell phone and you put in the text bar, Sales Edge, one word. Some iPhones will break it up. It's got to be one word. Text that to 55678. 55678. It's going to take you to a peachy and peachy link, which will take you to a splash page. The first thing you're going to see is recapture lost revenue through virtual selling. It's five free videos. No upsell. You're not going to be hammered by me. Now, what happens is you're going to put your first name in and your email. They're going to send the videos to you. You can watch it on your phone and email. If you scroll down, there's links to our free podcast, Sales Edge. There's also some free downloads. The information that's on that right there is going to help you navigate these troubled times. Now, from another aspect, what can you do today? The first thing you want to do is limit the amount of things you're thinking you're doing and make sure you're going to work in your highest priorities there are that are going to get you through this. Not everything you do is going to affect change. The only thing I know about business, the only thing that affects business is cash flow. <laughs> That's true. We, we look, I do all the sales training. I do all the travel training. Dawn does the three day speaker boot camp with me and she does private LinkedIn training. But by and large, I'm doing 99% of the training, but I'm doing all the selling. So if I'm not training, I'm selling. Now, are there some things that need to be done that don't get done? You better believe it. Yeah. But I haven't seen too many businesses go out of business when cash flow is more than outgo. So I would focus on a minimum amount of things that are going to get you momentum. Nice, 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 nice. So to round us off here, Joe, I got to ask, and, I, and it's a question I throw out often to, to, uh, to, to my guests. If you could pick three people, living or dead, to form a special board of advisors to you and Don, who would they be and why? Golly, that's tough. That's really tough. Uh, if I could create a board around me, and, and they could be, you could, you know, people who are alive or, or, you know, people from the past. I think Zig Ziglar would be one. Yeah. I think Zig Ziglar was the ultimate in attitude. Right. I, I will tell you that you better have your attitude straight. And I don't know of a, another speaker in the history of professional communicators that did that better than Zig. I would want Paul from the Bible because nobody had a tougher road and he kept going. Yeah. And I'm about, you know, I'm, I'm just average when things are good. I'm great when things are bad. I want him in my corner to just have a wisdom of got to keep going. You got to nice. keep going. A third one, there's, there's a million people that can be a third one. Uh, I think of, of some of the giants, you know, I think of Winston Churchill might be a third. Hmm. I mean, 
he had a lot of flaws. And you and Winston Churchill have a similar demeanor and personality style. You're very people oriented, but you're also very driven. And when we think about what Winston Churchill did during one of the darkest times in our history and how he inspired and influenced through the spoken word, I mean, he literally pulled England through the darkest time in their history yep. by being a leader of action. So those right off the top of my head, those would be three. Wow, that that's a that's a pretty impressive board there. And uh I would say I would say if if you know you you you're you're in the number one position, <laughs> I can see why, because the, the, they're 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 probably on your shoulder. But no, Joe, this this has been great and thank you for sharing that. Thank and, you. And I, I've been looking forward to reconnecting with you. We we met that one time, then we had coffee and then yeah, the world. Yeah. Your business went off and we were focused on tripling our business and, and this brought us back together. So we need to stay in contact. Uh, we will. And we'll, we'll have more of these together because I, you know, I really, really enjoy, first of all, I admire you and, 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 and Don and, and everything that you guys do out there. And, and, and thank you. Um, and, and, and secondly, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, and well, in front of your audience, we're going to be inviting you on our show. We oh, have a thank huge you. audience. And I think it's important for business people to understand the importance of security. And so I will contact you about how we do that and get some dates, but we'd love to have you on our show. Awesome, awesome. I look forward to that. And I look forward to having you back in the future so that we can, you know, get you, you know, share some more nuggets and, and, and help people along the, the path here. And so thank you very much, Joe. Thank it's you. always, always a pleasure and keep doing what you're doing. And folks, thank you very, very much for joining us. Um, this has been another spectacular uh, podcast. Great having Joe on here and happy that he was able to shore, uh, share some of his nuggets with us. I will put in the text down below uh, the, the information on you know where you need to go to get the free gift that he gave away. And, 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 and the other and thing, the if, yeah. you know, you can put my website on there also. Awesome, uh, do. If you're on LinkedIn, please send me an invite. And that's Joe Peachy, you'll see me. I look Italian because I am. Uh, and, and the other thing is, if you ever just want to have a complimentary cup of Joe, call me at 407-947-2590, and we'll there talk. You go. There you go. The man said it all. <laughs> Thank you very much, folks. Have a wonderful week. We'll catch up on the next one. Stay safe and keep crushing it. Hi, I'm Roy Richardson, host of the Dynamic Business Leaders Podcast. Are you a business owner or a leader of a successful business? If yes, we'd love to have you as a guest on our podcast. Our goal is simple. We provide a platform for leaders to share their experiences to benefit others. We want to hear your story, how you got started, the challenges you faced along the way, and your passion today. If this sounds like you or if you know someone who fits the criteria, then be sure to visit our website at dynbizpodcast.aurora-infotech.com. That's dynbiz podcast.aurora-infotech.com. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the notification bell to be notified when our next podcast video is live. Or if you rather listen to us during your car ride, you can also follow us on your favorite audio channel using the corresponding links below. Thanks. And once again, keep crushing it.